All right, welcome back to another episode of Leah's Lens. Um, if you're joining from Power of Story or Author Spotlight, thanks for joining from there. Today, I'm so excited to have a special guest, Nicole Thomas in the building. Hey, girl. Hey. Um, yeah, so you are a published author of a, is it Christian fantasy? Or? Yeah. Okay, Christian fantasy. Yeah, and um, something that you said in your bio was, you know, the fastest way to see the world and experience adventures is to open a book. And I absolutely adore that. Um, so I, I kind of want to know, you know, who is Nicole Thomas? What is your story? Uh, give us a little background about who you are. Well, I'm from New York. I live in Queens, New York right now. Um, grew up in Long Island. I have one daughter and a cat who's sitting here watching me. <laughs> <laughs> I've been married for 11 years. Um, this is my first venture into publishing. Um, mm -hmm. The pictures of the books are behind me. Um, so I have those three. I have a small book of pocket poetry out as well. Um, I just, I love reading. And so that just turned into, let me write a book. <laughs> right. I didn't intend to write a book, but it happened. It happened. And so the, um, the Christian fantasy, those are, it's like a trilogy. They all go together. Yes. Oh my gosh. I'm going to have to read it. I, I hear you talk about it all the time. I need to go, I need to go order it. Um, but yeah, that's amazing. So you just love to read and, you know, you probably drew inspiration from the books that you were reading. What kind of books did you read like growing up or, or what were you really into? Well, that was different. Growing up, I read a lot of different um, <laughs> different books. I was more into urban fiction growing up. Mm -hmm. um, and then as I got older and matured, my taste changed. So now I really do read mostly fantasy, um, mm -hmm. a lot of Christian fiction because, you know, it's just it's my faith and it's what I love to read. Yeah. And um, that that's really it. I, I don't really read a lot of romance um, I don't watch romance on TV. My sister's always calling me like, you're so jaded. I'm just like, yeah, Hallmark <laughs> is not real. <laughs> like, it's not real life. So just give it I as false books. expectations. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I read books that are more realistic. Um, even okay. though fantasy is fantasy, but to me, it's more realistic. Yeah. Um, so I guess, you know, from your story, you, you're a big reader. Of it's what you do in any time of the day or night is reading. So I guess, cool. did I go out for a second? You did. You I did. You're back. Okay. I'm back. Cool. Um, so what are like three important lessons that you've learned from your story and maybe you would like to share it with others? From writing it or just in general? Just, yeah, in general or writing or, or whatever your heart is telling you to speak on. Um, it was a difficult process writing it. Um, when I started the book, um, the first book, I really didn't know it was going to be a trilogy. Like I just mm -hmm. kind of started writing. I was in a place in 2019. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Um, I was kind of stagnant in life in general. Wasn't happy at home. I wasn't happy at work. It's just like, what am I supposed to be doing right now? God, like mm -hmm. kind of bored here. Right. So, <laughs> I prayed about it. And I literally woke up one morning hearing, you know, Alana, who's one of the main characters running through the woods, you know, for her life. And so I woke up and I just started writing and I wrote the first book in 30 days. Wow. So it was really fast. And one mistake that I made was not consulting anybody. <laughs> and so I, I highly advise anybody who wants to write a book, consult other people, talk to people mm -hmm. who have published already, hire an editor. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I finished writing it and I just published it. Like I just put it on, I put it on Amazon. I had my husband design a cover because he went to school for graphic design. I went to school for broadcast journalism at PR. So I was like, oh, I'm pretty good with this writing stuff. I can do the grammar. I could do that. I was right. wrong. <laughs> I was wrong. And um, <laughs> the reviews are there for the world to see forever. <laughs> so um, so I, I, that's one lesson that I definitely, you know, tell everybody, you know, just hire an editor. You you may be good, but you're not that good. And even though right. some people may be, the general population is not. So. Yeah. I feel and like I, even editors need editors. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, exactly. That's how we do it here at Self-Publish in 30 Days. Like, we're not just going to give you one editor because you never know. Like, mistakes are made. And, yeah. and that's yeah. I, mean. I have two editors. Like, one is mainly for, like, you know, grammatical stuff. And then the other one is more for, like, content. So, yeah. like, you have to have different set of eyes for different things. And it totally. really makes a difference. 
So yeah. do that whole thing. And it, yeah, it doesn't hurt. I mean, as much as your ego might be crushed a little bit, like it's okay to get help. <laughs> yes, it really is because you, your ego will be crushed much more. Right. Because <laughs> I pulled the book from the shelf, like I pulled it completely. And then I, you know, I got in touch with my editor. I was referred to her. Um, because I had submitted the book for like, you know, you can get for like reviews and things with different companies. Right. And they were like, we don't feel comfortable really giving a good review for this because like the story's good, but you need a lot of work. And I'm just like, okay. Uh -huh. So I was just like, who do you, you know, do you have anybody in house that I could work with? And so they referred me to an editor and it just turned out that the editor was a Christian as well. And oh, it's like, amazing. we just really, really clicked. So yeah. I love her, Tracy's her name. She's awesome. And I will tell everybody. Go hire Tracy. Go hire Tracy. <laughs> They're amazing. So it was out, it was like published, and then yeah. you realized all this was happening and you took it down. Yeah. Oh, wow. Was that like, you know, so that's pro a, a pivotal moment? Yeah, right? <laughs> but it's back up. It's it's edited, I'm, I'm sure now, because oh, yeah. of Tracy. <laughs> yes, thanks to Tracy and Nigel. Um, it's definitely out, and I'm I'm so much happier with the product. And yeah. the covers. I redid the covers, too. Oh wow! Yeah, these are not the original covers. And oh. if you look on Goodreads, you will see the original covers, and they're okay, you know, but they're very yes. minimalistic and um, black and white. So mm. it, these are better. Gives it some spunk. Gives it like some attention. Grabs the eye. Yes, with the color, much much better. And then the wow. cover for the book they just released. I actually worked with an illustrator for that one because the first two are pre-made covers that I found online, and I just loved. Uh -huh. But the last one, I couldn't find a cover on the same site. So I, you know, went to different Facebook groups for cover illustrators and things. And I found Hannah. Amazing, 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 amazing. So wow. she designed my last cover and she's designing a cover that I'm going to release at the end of this year. And you found her through Facebook? I did, yeah. I love that. Oh, I love the power of social media. Yeah, like that's exactly. how we're, we're connected, you know, yes. Clubhouse. I love it. Yeah. Um, that's That's amazing. And I'm glad that you know, we figured it out and you got it back up because, you know, I guess without the edit, maybe there wouldn't be a trilogy or, or you wouldn't be kind of where you're standing today. So I definitely wouldn't be here. No. Yeah. Um, Cause I would have been, it's just, it's hard because, you know, you get the, the criticism and you're like, well, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. It really uh, could have put a stop to everything, but I'm, I'm grateful that I was able to take the criticism and then was pointed in the right di direction because it's one mm -hmm. thing to offer somebody criticism and then just leave them hanging. And just like, well, you gotta right. figure that out. <laughs> right. This isn't good, but like, good luck with it. Exactly. Like, okay. <laughs> exactly. It's better if, like, if you can point somebody in the right direction, it can it can be pivotal for them. Right. Constructive criticism. Yes. Like, give me some something more than just criticism. Exactly. Um, so you mentioned that your husband went to school for graphic design, um, and he helped you with the first cover of the of the first book. That's no longer that cover, but um, still. Still love his work. Um, but you know, do you have like a story of someone who inspires you? I don't know why I just thought of your husband. Maybe he doesn't inspire you, but you know, someone that inspired you to just kind of get on this uh, journey of of publishing and writing this Christian fantasy. Well, I would say my mother. She published her. She has two books out as well. Um, one is um, one, her first book was a more of a testimonial. She went through some health issues. So she wrote about her journey through that. And um, then the second one she re released was a uh, devotional. And I mean, for my whole life, she's been like, Nicole, just write a book. Like, just do it. And I'm just like, yeah, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. And because I write poetry. So I have like pages and like on backs of receipts and brown paper bags like just <laughs> just <laughs> anywhere you could write <laughs> exactly I was writing so I have poetry all over the place and she was always pushing me and not just her but other family members you know put it together get it mm -hmm. out there people are gonna want to read it I'm just like yeah nobody wants to read what I have to say <laughs> well it's kind of like you know the your story of publishing this book without you know edits or anything people wanted to read it it just needed some some oomph or, you know, some edits or, or whatnot. So just do it. Just get out there and um, you might as well try, you know, what do you have to exactly. lose? <laughs> Maybe a little bit of your ego. I, I, she, she was definitely an inspiration and a, a supportive factor in this whole process. Yeah. And I'm sure, you know, as if you said you were growing up, you know, reading books, she's telling you to write books. She probably was one to give you books and say, like, you got to read this or you just grew up, you know, that was your household. 
it was actually my grandmother your grandma like, yeah, yeah she she lived with us growing up and so you could always find me you know in the basement in her room she had boxes and boxes of books so but she she was into romance she was into the western romances oh, okay <laughs> the and the the sheriff and the damsel and the sheriff. like that was her thing and so i would always borrow books from her and then we would talk about it afterwards so like i mean she passed away a couple of years ago and uh, we still have all her books and i'm I don't have the space where I'm at now to take her whole collection. So I have like two boxes now, but I'm like trying to convince my parents, like just hold on to it a little while longer. Right. A, a bigger library and then I'll take all her books. Yeah, <laughs> it's like your own books. personal library. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah. Oh, we wow. Were, like we were very, books, oh. And she, I mean, she didn't live to see me publish this book, but mm. she she would be so proud. She would be so oh, yeah. Oh yeah, and she's probably looking down from heaven like Oh she girl. is. She <laughs> definitely is. Like I was into the romance, but I like the fantasy, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so yeah, what's like kind of the future of Nicole? Are you gonna keep publishing? Is there gonna be a fourth book to this trilogy? Uh what's what's the story of Nicole? I'm definitely gonna keep writing. I've gotten bitten by the bug, so I have so many like started <laughs> you know, works in progress that I'm working on right now. Like I have two children's devotionals that I'm working on. Um, as for this trilogy, I've gotten a lot of people who have read it and they're like, well, how did, you know, this character get there? And so they want backstories. So I'm working on a special release for the end of this year, mm -hmm. which I mean, it's going to be the box set, but there'll be an additional small, you know, short story for a backstory for one of the characters that I fell in love with writing. So I'm going to do his whole backstory as a special edition. And then that is have, so cool. Um, yeah, and then I have one standalone fiction novel that I'm working on as well. Oh my gosh. So it just kind of like, that's the thing too. Like once you get writing, it's like you can't stop. Like you said, no. you wrote the first book in 30 days. That's like, what? That's amazing, you know? But it's like anywhere you can write, like on the back of a uh, brown paper bag, yeah. right? Like I'm writing down this idea right now. I love that. Um, mm -hmm. And so you mentioned, you know, you woke up in the middle of the night to this like story in your head and you just started writing. Um, so I guess, you know, and then all of your family members were like, write a book. What are you doing? Write a book. Yeah. So what made you really believe that you could just write it? It was it just up the night going with it. Or what was the moment that you were like, I'm going to publish this. This is going to be my book. Um, it was when I woke up, like, yeah. because it was just it was like. I just felt it was like it was fire. Like I was on, like I was burning. Like it was just this burning urge to get it out. Like I could not stop. I was on my. I woke up and I'm on my phone in Google Docs. That's how I wrote the whole story. Was in Google. Your thumb's probably tired then. Like <laughs> it really was because I I didn't write any notes for the whole book. I had no notes. I just wrote the story as it came to me. So I'm sitting at work, logged into Google. And I work, at, I work at the airport, but my boss is like, he's the best boss in the whole world. So he's standing over my shoulder like, oh, what's happening now? What, what are you doing? <laughs> and I'm just like, I can't tell you. But, um, You're going to have to buy the book. <laughs> and he did. He's, my, my boss is the absolute best. Like, he's bought all of them. So, and they're in the that. library at my job right now. So anybody that comes in, they can, you know, borrow and read it. Like, it's amazing. Very, very supportive. Right. But, um, yeah, I use Google Docs. And I was just writing and I would call my mother and tell her, be like, mom, you've got to hear this. Like, this is what's happening and you know, whatever. And I'm just like, oh, so excited. I just couldn't stop. It was yeah. so, so exciting. And then I so, got to a point where I was just like, this is the end. And it was short and I wasn't sure. I was a little iffy about that because my books are very short. All of them are less than 50,000 words. So okay. Like, That's really short. It's not technically a novella, but it's not really like a full length epic fantasy either. So I'm like, hmm, do I need to continue? Should I just put them all in one? Should I break them up? What should I do? But every time I would try and go beyond that last chapter, I would get stuck. So I'm just mm. like, ah, all right. You <laughs> almost need like to like refresh and just get like a new sense of yeah, inspiration. Maybe read the book it. over and be like, oh, now I know where this story yeah, is going. I had to start completely over. So I was like, this is the end of book one. Let's see what happens in book two. <laughs> and then that one, each subsequent one took a little bit longer. I had to take more notes in the second book. Mm -hmm. And then in the third book, like, if you see my notebook, it's just full of, like, you know, what's going to happen and everything. Because there were so many details I had to keep track of by that point. Yeah. So I took a lot more notes on that one. 
Well, especially now, you know, if you do kind of like these backstories, you got to look back at the notes like, wait, yeah, so what color how does this, <laughs> right, like, hold on, I'm getting confused with these characters. Yeah. Um, so how has publishing changed your life? Has it changed it, you know, maybe just like spiritually or, or maybe even like, you know, monetarily? Not yet. I, I hope so. I really, 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 really hope so. Us too, girl, us too. <laughs> um, it's changed it personally though. Um, I was, I don't like the spotlight. Even like talking like this is new for me. Um, mm. I, I just don't like it. You know, I was never one to get up on stage and do things. I prefer to be the one, you know, in the kitchen helping out and not the mm. one, you know, out there doing anything. Right. So this has been a change with, you know, all eyes on me. Um, it's been a growing process. I've really had to come out of my comfort zone, but I find that I'm enjoying it, but I have to also learn how to pace myself because I'll mm. say yes to everything <laughs> at this point. Mm, you're I, yes, girl. <laughs> exactly. I have to get to the point where I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. Or I, right. you know, I have to put my phone down and get off clubhouse and get off Instagram. I'm just like, okay, I got to stop networking. I got to stop posting. Just take mm -hmm. a break. <laughs> Yeah. So it's been a little consuming, all consuming, as well as, you know, beneficial, but yeah. I'm working on the balance. <laughs> yeah, definitely. There's definitely a balance with that. You know, you can't like, I feel like there's so much pressure to just like put everything into it and like network all the time, like you're saying, when that's awesome and it's going to get you probably to where you want to be. But there's also, you got to take time for yourself. It's like the work life balance, you know, it's like any yeah. other job. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Um, so let me know the, the trilogy book. I wrote it down, but I, I don't want to mispronounce it. What is the book trilogy called? Tales of El Hanai. El Hanai. Okay. Yeah. I was going to butcher that right away. So I'm and glad I asked you. And, most, and it's funny. Only one person I've ever met has got it right off the bat. Really? <laughs> yeah. My dentist, he's Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> He's the only one who got it. I was just like, how did you? He was like, that sounds, sounds like a Jewish word. I'm just like, wow, okay. <laughs> That's amazing. So at least someone got it right. Um, yeah, yeah. So El, El, I'm going to mess it up again. El, El Hanai. El Hanai. Yeah, like if you write it down, it's just E-L and then phonetically Hanai. be H-A-N and then like I. El okay. Hanai. El Hanai. Yeah. Tales of El Hanai. Oh my gosh, I'm like just got chills. I want to go buy it right now because <laughs> what? Um, do you have um, like where can you know the audience find more about the trilogy? More just about you? Uh, we'll we'll have your socials linked and whatnot. But um, do you have like somewhere they can go buy this book or the trilogy? Yeah, um, it's. I mean, it is on Amazon, but it's also okay. on my website. If like I do signed copies and you know special packaging and stuff for the sign for the copies you purchase off my website. It's it's literally my name. NicolePatriceThomas.com. Amazing. We'll have that in the description. Also, um, you know, to, to kind of wrap things up, what is one, you know, parting piece of advice that you would give to someone who's, you know, thinking about sharing their story and kind of expertise with the world? What would you, what would you say to them? Aside from hiring an editor and <laughs> having an awesome, you know, good covers, um, I would say be true to yourself and the story that you want to tell. With mine, because I write Christian fantasy, I really had to come make a decision whether I wanted to label myself as Christian fantasy or simply fantasy. Um, so I think you need to be true to the story you want to tell, the audience that you want to reach, and then stick with that. Don't, mm -hmm. don't listen to other people. I mean, it's your story, it's your calling, and everybody's not going to like or understand it. But at the end of the day, it's you and that book. So make okay. sure you're happy with what you put out. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Authenticity is, is key. And I think especially when, you know, even just writing like fantasy, but especially if you're going to write a personal story that happened to you, be authentic with it and, um, and stick to it. And so, and you also have some po poetry books that you, you said, okay. Yeah, what are the, what is that called? Poetry. It's called facets of a poetic soul. Oh, yeah. what a title. Like, oh oh my goodness. Like, probably, probably grab, grab the little, the poetry book on the bottom. Yes, grab the poetry book on the bottom. That's my daughter. She's she's eight. She's sitting here. She's oh fine. my gosh! Amazing. Yeah, we'd love. I would love to see it because we see the the trilogy posters behind you with the cover. So did you lose my head? Call. Sorry. Oh no, you're okay.
the poetry book, the skinny one. Yeah. Thank you. So it's actually not the size. This was the proof. Okay. It's actually about like half the size because I call it pocket poetry, but oh. that's it. Oh my gosh, so cool. So you call it pocket poetry, like I could put it in my pocket and like take it with me? I hear you. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Can you hear me? No, I can't hear you. Oh no! <laughs> I don't know if it's me though, because I had gotten a call, so I had gone, it had gone off. Let me see, hold on. Maybe if I put my headphones in, it'll oh. work. Okay, what about now? Maybe? Anything? Anything? Can <laughs> I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. No. <laughs> I can read lips no. a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, can I like, hmm. Okay, maybe now. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, hopefully the, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to text you. I don't know where my phone is. <laughs> um okay well i'm just gonna wrap it up um i'm gonna wrap it up um uh, can you hear me can you see him <laughs> uh thank you so much I, <laughs> I don't know i don't know this is funny um i'm trying to see if i can like text you on here oh my phone's right here I'm going to message you on Instagram. Sorry, everyone, if you're listening to this. Um, but it was so... <laughs> She's back. She's back. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. <laughs> Woohoo! We figured it out. I don't know um, what happens. I don't know I either. I just disrupted it. Um, that's okay. I was just about to wrap. I was like, I'm going to wrap it up. And then I was like, I don't know if she can understand me. Um, so I just messaged you on Instagram. So just ignore that oh. one. <laughs> um, but thank you so much for being a guest on Leeds Lens. And, um, this will also be on Power Story and Author Spotlight. So if you're listening from there, go get Nicole's trilogy as well as her pocket poetry book. Um, ways to get it will be in the description below, but it was so awesome talking to you and I you love your story. Too. And I'm so excited to go buy the trilogy because I'm like invested now. I'm like, <laughs> I want to know who. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna get it. Elhani, 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 Elhani. Uh, I'm gonna mess it up. Close, <laughs> close. It's fine. Close. All right. Well, thank you so much, and I uh, hope you see you next time on Leah's Lens. Thank you, Leah.